In this final section on strings, we're going to look at one of the most important subjects in computer programming, iteration, which involves going through some sequence one element at a time. In this case, we'll be going through a string one character at a time. We actually don't quite know enough about strings yet, though, to do this the right way, so I'm going to show you a way that's a little cumbersome that will get us started, and then in a later section, I'll show you how to iterate through a string the preferred way in Ruby. The method we're going to use is called a for loop. Now this is a common kind of loop in lots of languages, but it's different in Ruby. In order to iterate through a string, the first thing we'll have to look at is how to access a particular element in a string. So let me remind you from the last section what soliloquy is. It's to be or not to be, that is the question. And let's look at the documentation. If we scroll down, Take a look here. Ah, look at this. Here we go. A equals hello there. A of one equals E. So that means that A of zero must be H. Let's go over to this example. Soliloquy of one should be, in the documentation, it was the second letter. So this should be O, right? So if you've seen arrays or strings in any other languages, this might look familiar. This square bracket notation is very common. And the number here is called the index. We see here that Ruby strings, as they are in most languages, are zero offset, meaning this first element, sometimes called the zeroth element, has index zero. And then all the way up to the end, this element here is the length of the string minus one. So what we want to do in this section is iterate through this string and just print out each character in turn. In order to do that, we need to make a for loop with an index variable that goes from zero up to the final index. Now, in a lot of languages, we would do something like this. For, say, i equals zero, i less than maybe five, i plus plus, this is an increment operator. So in JavaScript, we would do something like this. We would have a loop variable, i, that starts at zero and then goes up by one until it hits five and then the loop would stop. This syntax actually works in a large variety of different languages, but not in Ruby. In Ruby, what we do is we say for i in a range between say zero dot dot four. So this will just return an object that lets us go from zero up to four. And then we use a very characteristically Ruby word called do. This is definitely a difference from other languages, but it reads quite naturally. For i in zero up to four, do, and then we do something. In this case, let's just put us it. And how do we end this block of code? The same way we did with if, using the word end. And so you see here, IRB prints out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means we can iterate through the soliloquy string just by going from 0 up to the length minus 1. So let's look at the length. An exceptionally auspicious result, the answer to life, the universe, and everything, the number 42. So we can do something like this, for i in 0 dot dot 41, so subtract 1 because of the zero offset, do put s soliloquy of i. And that worked. Look at that. Now you might be wondering why do we subtract 1 by hand? Why can't we just let Ruby do that? And the answer is, well, we can. So we can do for i in zero up to soliloquy dot length minus one. Do put s soliloquy of i end. This might look a little strange. We're going 
from zero up to soliloquy dot length, is Ruby going to know to subtract first and then calculate the range? It did. Now I would probably write this with parentheses just to make it really clear that that's what the range is, like this. But as we've just seen, it works either way. So as mentioned before, this sort of for loop is not the preferred way to iterate in Ruby, but it does work. And it's a good way to get started. It's probably easier to understand than the most common way, and it also connects better to other languages. This idea of just getting something working any way you can is especially powerful in the context of a technique called test-driven development, where you write a test that will pass only if the code is right. Then you get it working however you want, and then you refactor the code. You change its form without changing its function. And so in this context, using a for loop or anything else is a great way to get to that initial first step of having code that's working, and then you can use something more elegant when you're ready to refactor. So that completes our introduction to Ruby strings, but strings are incredibly important, and we'll be seeing a lot more of them throughout the rest of this tutorial.